to hash this out a little bit more, I was joined earlier by Steve Anderson, executive director of Open Media, and I first asked him if Internet Slowdown Day can really get people to act. I think so. I mean, millions of people have taken action uh, to safeguard the open internet. Um, we've seen huge websites move, uh, you know, Netflix, uh, Vimeo, Etsy. Um, and so, uh, you know, I think with that many people involved, we've seen in the past when you have people en masse um, getting involved online, call calling and emailing their uh, you know, their politicians, um, that those politicians over time move. And, you know, we're kind of up against one of the largest lob lobbyist groups uh, uh, essentially in the world. Um, but when you have uh, people getting involved en masse, uh, we've seen in the past that you, we can change things. Mm -hmm. And let's just say these companies decided to take it one step further by actually slowing down the consumer's internet speed um, instead of just using some symbolic symbol on their you know, home pages of their websites. Uh, that would certainly wake up people to the reality here. Uh, why do you think they decided against something that could have provoked an even stronger response? Um, well, I think that they just wanted to um, kind of symbolize or give you the feeling of that kind of slow loading wheel. And I think the widgets that um, the companies are putting up and uh, other websites, uh, you know, nonprofit websites as well, um, are putting up kind of gives you that feeling of what it's like to have a slower internet. Um, so I, I think that's enough to demonstrate for people. And we're seeing, you know, again, millions of people taking action, one of the largest uh, online protests in history. Um, so I, I don't think that they actually need to slow down all their services, but just show people, give them a sense of what it will feel like um, if the telecom companies um, get to control the internet and make it more like television. Mm -hmm. and, and what's interesting is, you know, bigger companies are on board. You mentioned Netflix uh, also participating in this uh, campaign. What's interesting is that uh, this proposal could actually stand to benefit large video streaming companies just like Netflix by allowing its video to, to stream much faster. So is this move surprising that, that Netflix is on board? Um, well, I think companies like that know that they would never have gotten a foothold in the marketplace if there wasn't an open, non-discriminatory internet. Um, so, and they w might want to launch other services uh, on the internet as well. So they know that the open internet, you know, that platform for free expression and innovation is key to their founding and key to any other services that they want to bring together uh, in, in the future. Um, so I think that's why why they're standing up today. And, and also, to be honest, I also, it, you know, it's because so many people have been calling on all these companies to defend the internet so I think they're just responding uh, to their customers as well and Steve opponents to this FCC proposal say that instead of creating slow and fast lanes what would be more fair is reclassifying the broadband provision as a telecommunications service I was hoping you could shed light on how that would work yeah, well, I, I mean, what's happened is um, the regulators at the FCC have tried to uh, assert internet openness rules, you know, net neutrality rules, um, but the court uh, has said that uh, they don't actually have the jurisdiction to do that with the way that they classify internet services. So what many people have been saying is just reclassify um, internet services as a part of telecommunication services because it is, you know, provided by telecom companies um, so that you can prevent the, these, uh, you know, huge companies from slowing down our access to our favorite websites. Um, so it's just basically a way to make sure that the internet is governed in an open and, and neutral way, and, and that seems like the best path forward right now. Now, the campaign is clearly making an attempt to get as many people as possible to target the FCC, sending in comments and so forth before the uh, September 15th deadline. At what point uh, should we expect to hear a verdict out of the FCC on the ruling? Um, you know, yeah, it is key that people get involved right now um, because the the timing for public comment closes down uh, on September 15th, so people can go to stoptheslowdown.net if they want to get involved. Um, but we expect the FCC to make a decision uh, by the end of the year. But this comment period is really crucial, so um, the number of people that get involved will really probably dictate um, if we have an open, neutral internet for the future. And you know that that's basically the future of our economy, of our democracy, and of free expression.
And if the FCC does go forward with the proposal in its current form, what's the next step? Uh, does that proposal have to be approved by Congress? Um, Congress does not have to approve it, um, but um, they, they could try to um, undermine it through passing legislation that just undermines the, the FCC's regulatory uh, power, um, but the Congress doesn't need to approve it. So um, we're hoping that, um, you know, once we win this thing by the end of the year, that seeing, you know, the number of people and really votes um, that are behind this, um, that that'll be kind of the last word on this. Uh, that's definitely our hope. Certainly a topic spurring a lot of debate. Okay, Steve Anderson, Executive Director of Open Media, thanks for that.